finally, without further ado, it's my great pleasure to introduce my longtime friend, Gary Braun of Pivotal Advisors. Gary is joining us today to share about business growth through sales operating systems. And uh, this is something Gary knows a lot about, having worked with over, I think, 300 companies that are entrepreneurial growth businesses across a wide variety of industries. So we're excited to hear from him. And Gary, I will stop my screen share and open it up to you and ask you to introduce yourself more fully. So go ahead and grab the mic. All right, let me jump in here, start sharing right away. I'm really happy to be here. Um, we work with lots of different, you guys see on the screen, right? Good, all right. Work with lots of different companies that are on the EOS platform or similar type of platform. And um, it's tough. We're, we're trying to implement a lot of change and get a lot of things going and it's not always easy. So um, when we talk about sales operating systems, we're really talking about almost a subcomponent of the whole EOS system, very specific to what we do in sales. So as we plow ahead here, real quickly, not gonna spend much time here. Uh, as Jen Jennifer said, we work with over 300 different organizations across US and Canada, uh, and we're partnering with people to make sales predictable and consistent and keep it growing. Uh, we're gonna look in a minute, companies tend to plateau sometimes in their revenue, and we're talking about why that is and how we can move them forward. So I like to borrow this piece of work by an organization called Corporate Life Cycles. And they, they have charted lots and lots of organizations of all different sizes and said they go through an evolution. So when we start a brand new company, we have a cool idea, we're going to go to market with it, we call it courtship. Courtship is, let's see if I can actually sell something. Then we get going into this thing called infant. Infant is, I got a few customers. Let's see if I can get more. Let's see if we can go to market. Now, you can imagine in these early stages of an organization, by the way, just show a physical hands. Who's been in one of these startups before? Okay, lots of them. You know what it's like. Who's a good customer there? Anybody. If they're going to, you know, if they have a pulse, if they can breathe, they're a potential prospect. I'm going to sell to whoever I can sell to. And there's not a heck of a lot of process, systems, accountability, plans. No, we're running around doing lots of stuff. And we're just trying to make a go of it. Then something interesting happens. We get into this stage that we call go-go. And we're, we have a little bit more of a going concern now, but there's still not a lot of system and process. There's some there, but we live off what I like to call tribal knowledge. It's in everybody's head. Everybody still wears lots of hats. Um, lot, like you might market it, sell it, deliver it, do customer service on it, do everything. Still lots of people going here. This is where a lot of people get into EOS because we said, this is craziness. We can't uh, continue at this rate. But I've seen companies last year for years. I've had one company that's a fourth generation over hundred years old. I would squarely put them in this category. Then something funky happens where we said, wouldn't it be cool if we did the same thing twice in a row? This is what we call adolescent stage. It's kind of like a teenager, right? We try to apply rules and, and guidelines and whatnot, and they don't like it. So when we do this, we get a lot of resistance, especially in sales. Sales doesn't like to do this. They're pretty autonomous, independent people, and we, we try to throw rules on them, and they don't like it. And sometimes they fall back to go-go and say, that didn't work, that's not for us. The really successful ones, they get system in place. They get a process in place. They get all these different things going. They look at their metrics, they make adjustment and they live and breathe. And this is probably when they're the, the most efficient and the most effective. So that's where, where people strive to get to unless you're being a lifestyle business. So we believe that the way to get there is what we call this thing called the sales operating system. And real briefly, it's we have a strategy. We know what we're trying to get done. We have good people systems, not just the right people on the team, but good people systems for how we hire and onboard. We've got repeatable process, so we're not just relying on the top one or two people. We've got good measurements, leading and lagging indicators. We have good reward systems. Some of that's comp, a lot of that's not comp. And then we've got an execution system. You know, Think L10 on steroids, beyond that. And it's all driven by the leadership. And I'm not going to go through all of this, but it breaks down to a lot more detail about uh, each one of these areas. And for the sake of time today, we're just going to concentrate on a few. We're going to concentrate on that leader who sits in the middle. You're going to learn a little bit about these people. 
we're going to look at some of the metrics that um, these people are using. And probably one of the biggest things I see across hundreds of companies is this thing that we call performance management and sale. We're going to show you a little bit about what that looks like too. So we're just going to hit a little fraction of the overall puzzle, but uh, I think you'll get the idea. So let's start with the leader. Where do most of them come from? They're promoted from salespeople. And if you think about the good traits of a good salesperson, they can plan, they can strategize their deals, they prospect, they network, they're developing relationships, they're great at asking questions, they're good problem solvers. And they say, wow, you've been super successful, so we're gonna make you the leader. Good news, okay, so now you become the leader and here's what a leader needs to be good at. Whoa, something went crazy on there. Uh, Sorry about that. Here's what a leader needs to be good at. A leader needs to be really good at hiring, training, coaching, strategizing for the company, not just, not just my own deals, making a plan. I got to develop systems and processes so other people can follow what I did, not just my unconscious competent. I need to drive accountability, communicate progress, etc. And to get all of this done, this is where we think that the sales operating system comes in. Now, if you look at these two jobs, they're way different. They are a completely different set of skills. And what we see a lot is we promote the salesperson to be a sales leader and they don't know how to do it. And there is very little training or resources for these people to get better. There is no system. They kind of just do whatever their last leader taught them how to do. And then they're kind of stuck. Um, so that that's the, the problem that we're dealing with. And, and to go into it a little bit, I want to show you this is what most leaders look, like, look at. They've got their scorecard and they go, okay, here we got four people on the team. For the sake of this example, they all have the same goal. They might typically be different, but then they all have actuals. And they go, okay, well, Jasmine's at 75% of goal and Cedric's at 80 and Brianna's doing really well. And then I ask CEOs and I ask sales leaders all the time, okay, what do you do with this data? And I get some wild answers. I get, well, Jasmine and Cedric aren't making it, so we got to put them on a pill. Got to put them on performance plan. Um, I hear generic statements like, well, I need to dig in more and see, see what's going on. Okay, how do you dig in? Well, I, I don't know. I look at their pipeline. Okay, and what are you looking for there? And we don't have good answers. And then I ask him, well, what do you do with Brianna? Well, she's doing really good. We should, we should raise our quota. I mean, they just make all kinds of assumptions based on some limited data. And my, my contention is there's just not enough data here to know what to do. So a big concept of EOS is create your scorecards. And I think you can manage an entire sales organization on three numbers. You need some type of a leading indicator out here. And it's different for every organization, calls, meetings, demos, proposals, whatever. You need some rate of effectiveness. So even if we're scaring them up, are we converting them into business? We can measure that a few different ways. And then even if I'm scaring them up and I'm closing them, are they big enough? Because if I have a million dollar quota, and all my deals are $1,000, that takes a lot of deals to add up to a million. So if I have this combination of things that all play off of each other, I'm starting to develop a pretty good scorecard. So here's what it would look like. I've got my three things, my at-bats, if you will, my close rate, my deal size, and I've got a pretty clear expectation to say, for $75,000, you should scare up 10 opportunities, which turn into five proposals, which turn into three deals at three out of 10 is 30,000, and they should be that big. That's a pretty clear expectation if you're on that sales team. So now when I apply the data to that, we can start to diagnose where things are going. We look at Jasmine and go, awesome, you're getting a lot of activity going. You got your proposals that, oh, your deal size is way off. So now I use this as a diagnostic with Jasmine to say, who are we targeting? We need to go upstream more because this isn't cutting it. Or maybe we're discounting, or maybe we're taking the low hanging fruit and missing the bigger pile. If I look at Cedric, he's getting more opportunities than Jasmine is even, and his close rate's terrible and he's losing them in the process. Being an experienced sales leader just probably means I'm not getting to the right decision makers, I'm not very good at follow-up, maybe I'm pricing too early and not building value, something's going on there. And then even Brianna, great. She was rocking it, right? She, she was 80K versus her 70. Yeah, she's the whale hunter. We see these people all the time. And if they hit it, awesome. If they don't hit it, you're on the bottom stack, Frank. 
So I want to coach Brianna too. And I will look at Brianna and say, I'm not raising her quota, by the way. I want to look at her and say, nice deal. Way to go. Good job. Kind of worried about next month, next quarter. This conversation about looking at their metrics and sitting down and discussing with them what they need to do differently just doesn't happen in most sales leaders because nobody's taught them how to do that. This is just one element of what we're talking about here. And if we boil it all back down, learnings across 300 plus companies, that sales leader plays a critical role in how you grow it. Not all good salespeople are good sales leaders, and you might need different sales leaders depending on what stage you're in. So what I'm really looking for is building out that system, the sales operating system that really helps you with planning and process and accountability. And uh, when they get that, most of them are pretty bright people. They can get to that next level. So some resources for you. If you, if you go to pivotaladvisors.com and how-to guides, we've got some resources out there for how you can build out some of these things. We just touched on metrics today, but we got some more tools out there. And if you want to uh, contact me directly and you want to learn more about us, there's my contact information.